Welcome and thanks for joining our virtual event, Breakfast at Wolferman's. This is our monthly morning show where we share practical tips, ideas, and recipes in each episode over the most important meal of the day, breakfast. So sit back, grab your coffee, tea, juice, and favorite bites, and join our conversation online. So with that, as we approach the end of May, we're baking up a fresh start and digging in ways that we can all elevate the warmer weather entertaining season. We're talking fresh starts today with two of my favorite people and hopefully yours as well. Joining us is chef, cookbook author, and host of PBS's Patty's Mexican Table, the wonderful Patty Kinich. And also joining us is floral extraordinaire, lifestyle expert, Julie Mulligan who has a few entertaining ideas to share with us later on during our time together. Good morning, Patty and Julie. I love that we can gather this way. <laughs> I agree, so looking forward to in-person gatherings, but I'll take this. Same here, same here. I bet you both have had some memorable moments at your table, including a few incredible meals along the way. I'm curious as we start our little conversation here, um, what is like a favorite ritual or even a favorite food that you tend to enjoy more than others with your family and friends at your breakfast table? What do we have at, what's on tap today? Patty? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, our house, we love breakfast every day, but especially over the weekends where we wake up, you know, later and I have more time to cook and we go full on Mexican style, we'll do you know, like all sorts of breads and sweets and I'll make beans from scratch and we'll rancheros and we'll have coffee and tea. And then we we do what we Mexicans call sobremesa, which is you never leave the table. You let the kids go run out until they're hungry again while you still linger with more coffee and tea and you bring out more muffins or scones and then just really enjoy the weekend. And, and I guess having breakfast every day reminds us that we will have that longer space over the weekend. What about you, Julie? Well, it's definitely weekends uh, is a bre breakfast focus. Um, and uh, everyone in my family seems to have gotten the breakfast gene and a really good breakfast bake. I have to be honest with you, where, you know, true New Yorkers, especially Queens, it's bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> That's delicious. That's I one of our favorites, but of course, anything with hollandaise, so eggs benedict, crab cakes benedict. Um, but I love to have, like, that's just when it's just us at home. Um, but if there's a few people coming over, I love to try different things. We just did a, a brunch for Easter, and it's just fun, and everybody brings a little something, and you start grazing like you do, Patty, which is really, <laughs> is there any other way to eat? <laughs> I know, I agree, I couldn't agree more. What about you, Francesca? Uh, me, I mean, everything you're, you're putting down and picking up, I agree with both of you. And I, I too love a sausage and uh, uh, bacon, egg and cheese, some sort of situation on a muffin. Uh, but to me, breakfast, um, I, I tend to, of course, have a delicious meal, but I, I use it as a time to ground myself for the day. It's the one time where my mind isn't completely active yet with emails and phone conversations. So I try to turn it more into a ritual so I start the day with thankfulness, obviously, um, like most of us do. And then I, you know, pour that coffee, grab grab that breakfast, and I take about 10 minutes just to just to get grounded and start my day. Um, so that for me would be my 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 favorite and everyday moment. Um, but um, anything I can microwave as well is always a winner in this household. But I have to say what you're saying is so crucial because if we could all stop you know after we wake up i usually run to check you know if i got a response to that email or if i needed to do something and i find that the days where i don't get to my computer or my phone first but i get the chance to say hi to everybody at home and make myself a cup of coffee or if i need to go jog or something and then get ready for the overwhelming flow of work that's coming in devices these days we we would all you know start better like the way you're saying francesco that's a really amazing tip oh thank you i appreciate that and to everyone watching us online we'd love to hear from you so make sure to share in the discussion by adding your comments below can't wait to see what you write i'm hungry now after talking about that so let's continue with uh, a few 
Well, let's just call them a breakfast menu of questions I have here. It's kind of like a little speed round. I thought it would be fun because as you both probably experience in your life as well, it's always nice to start the day with a little bit of fun. Um, so feel free to chime in at home as well if you're watching or in the office um, in the comment section. It's easy. I'm just going to list off a few things and you're going to repeat your pick. So like for an example question, French toast or avocado toast? And you both would respond with whatever one is your favorite. So easy enough? At the same time? Yeah. Time? Do we scream it at the same time? Um, no, we're going to draw straws. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here Good. we go. Bagel, biscuit, or muffin? Biscuit. Biscuit. Oh, biscuit. Butter or cream cheese? Butter. Butter with cream cheese. <laughs> I like that. I'm butter, cream cheese, but and sometimes- it's a bagel, cheese. then it's cream cheese. Okay, yeah, I do a little honey sometimes too on top of mine. Jam or jelly? Jam. All right. Here's a pressing question. Pods, press, or automatic coffee? Press. Well, press, but do I do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Right, I prefer right. the press, but I usually do the pods. Pulp or no pulp orange juice? No pulp. Pulp the pulp. Just give me all the pulp. Wow, uh, okay. Bacon, sausage, or veggie all day? Bacon. Bacon. Bacon, yeah. Scrambled or fried? Scrambled. Sunny side up. I was oh. going to say, that'll be easy. I love it. You made it your own. All right, and finally, hot sauce or hollandaise sauce? Hollandaise. Hollandaise with a dash of hot sauce, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I love it. You know, you basically won breakfast there with that with that combination. All right, that was fun. Thanks for playing my little my little speed round. Now I know what to serve both of you at brunch someday. Patty, you changed careers from political analyst to chef. Um, why and how did you make that decision? Since we're speaking of fresh starts, I just find that so fascinating, your backstory. Share with us a little bit about the most challenging and gratifying part of that transition for you. Thank and you Julie, so I'd love much. to hear your, your yeah. take on that later too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That is, I get, I get asked that question a lot. I used to be a political analyst and I wanted to be an academic and I've always been a big idealist. And I come from a long line of immigrants to Mexico and my grandparents made Mexico their home. So we're a Mexican family deeply rooted. And um, as, after I moved to the US, I really started missing home and the food and the dishes that nurtured me growing up. And I felt very rootless in America because my husband was working all day. We don't have family here. Um, and I started cooking the foods from home and feeling really anchored. And at the same time, I started um, jumping into so many myths and preconceptions about Mexican food and cuisine and people, what we Mexicans look like, what we eat, how we think, and, and mostly if we or if we don't enrich the American table. And I started, you know, veering into cooking. Um, I was pregnant with my third child working in a policy research center, had an existential crisis of sorts, resigned to the shock of my boss, who's my dearest friend, and said, you know, I just can't tell political analysis stories anymore. I need to tell food stories. I love the noble space of the kitchen, and resigned, enrolled in cooking school at night. My goal was to be a food writer, but then my path veered elsewhere, and I ended up with a cooking show, and I love it so much. Well, we love that you that you switched too, and that you know we're able to enjoy the the fruits and the gifts of your of your world. And I mean, it's phenomenal what, what you've done. Uh, and that story is just so inspirational, and that is the epitome of a fresh start. So I appreciate you sharing that again. <laughs> and kudos Julie, to what you, about you? Because that takes a lot of courage. A lot of courage. Most people don't do it. Mm -hmm. So. You know, Julie, I get from all of these questions that I get asked, most of the questions I get is from people saying, I've been thinking about switching. How did you do it? How did you decide? Like, how were you able to make the jump? And honestly, it was like jumping into the abyss. And I had so much to lose that I couldn't waste a single minute or energy because I already had kids. I was already contributing to our family income, you know, and and so I just gave it my all. And and I think that if you switch careers much later in life, it's an advantage because 
you know you have less time, but you know you have more experience, you care less about what people think, and you have all the tools from your previous field or career that are gonna give you an edge. So the fact that I was a political an analyst, a historian, a researcher, really gave me tools to present food and cooking in a different way. Not just recipes, but going, you know, with culture, legends, history, and people really dig that. Mm -hmm. So I always tell that. people, if you, you know, if you were an architect and you decide to be a florist, if you were a baker and you decide to be a lawyer, listen, you're going to come at it with, with tools that others in your field don't have. So it gives you an edge. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, Great. you have the passion. Uh, Julie, you have passion as well. What about you? Did you have to pivot at any point in your life and was it rewarding? Well, I'm chock full of passion, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and okay. that it's what keeps me going. I'm with, in a family business. 1-800-Flowers is a family business. It's my brother Jim who started the company way back when, an 800 square foot flower shop. And most of my family was in the, the social work field um, at the time. And um, I was always creative, but I didn't know what my medium was. You know, looked into photography and calligraphy and painting and just always liked to express myself. And the minute I walked into the shop that my brother invested in, I, I found my medium, I found my passion, and I've been very lucky throughout my entire 40 plus year career to do so many things, to have so many different opportunities. And now this is, really the icing on the cake, like the cherry on the sundae. I've stepped down from a corporate role and I get to, you know, write blog posts, do shows like this with fantastic people. And I just document the way I live my life now. I love flowers. I love entertaining. I've got a million projects all over my house. So every room is another post waiting to happen. And <laughs> this is how I get to live out my life. I mean, come on, how lucky is that? It, yeah, it sounds wonderful. And if you're watching online too, let's not let's not forget everyone watching, please join the conversation and comment. Uh, we'd love to hear what big changes um, or plans you have or, or have made already and share with us what helped you make your decisions as well. I know for me, my, my pivot wasn't so much professionally as it was personally. Um, I became a dog dad and, <laughs> and that little furry friend um, opened up a part of my heart that I didn't know I had or it needed opening. So I went, my biggest transition was going from having all white furniture, white rugs to having all white furniture, white rugs with slip covers and tons of toys everywhere. So whether you're a parent of any kind, I think we've all been there. <laughs> what kind of dog? Uh, he's a papillion mix. So he's, 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 a, he's a black and white little bundle of love and he doesn't bark, thank goodness. So that, that to me was um, a, a big transformation and a transition and a fresh start because I was very not that person, you know? Patty, you, you touched on a few things there when talking about your stories. Is there like a number one piece of advice that you can give someone um, that is your uh, foothold and cornerstone to making a change and having a fresh start? Absolutely. I always tell people, I, I was asked um, Francesco to give the keynote speech at my uh, oldest son high school graduation a couple of years ago and i worked so hard on that keynote even though i've given many addresses but you know to have your own son and his classmates all these 18 year olds um you don't want to embarrass your kids more <laughs> than you already do and i think the biggest advice that i could give kids were two things one um, is do not ever put things on the negotiating table that are going to compromise your identity. And many times those things are gonna be the things you are most embarrassed about, the things you get criticized for, the things that doors close on you. So in my case, in connecting to my career, it was my accent, it was my heritage, it was being a Mexican wanting to present Mexican uh, cooking in TV, in American networks. So it was too much of an accent. Like, do we need a Mexican? Is it not better to have not a Mexican describing and translating? And 
I was offered a cooking show that was not Mexican and I was offered to take classes to remove my accent and for other opportunities. And I really had to look in the mirror and say, will I be able to proudly look at myself three months from now without an accent, with people not knowing where I come from and cooking food that I am not that familiar with. And um, so that was the one thing that I said, do not put on the negotiating things, uh, table things that are part of who you are because you will be recognizing the future for fighting and, and strengthening those, which today I get recognized by my accent and my high pitch voice, you know, I never changed it. And the other thing was, you really don't know what you're gonna end up doing in life. Look, I was a political analyst now, I cook all around the US, you know, making enchiladas. So um, if there is something that you really wanna do, whether it is you're passionate about or you feel the urge to do it, don't do too much research. If you start doing too much research and obstacles and competition and what you're gonna run into, you can freeze on your track. Mm -hmm. And I told them, many times you have to jump in the water and once you're in, you figure it out, you know, how cold it is, how hot it is. And that's how I was able to switch because if I knew now what um, I didn't know then, all the obstacles I was going to encounter season after season, I would not have done what I did. I wish I could say if I knew I would do it anyways, but there's no possible way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know true. that was a long, a long answer, but 10 no, it's, years it's, later... it's a poetic answer. It's a beautiful poetic answer. And I think what people tend to put down in others, even you know, from grade school going up, tend to be your, your biggest, brightest star uh, within yourself. You know, So I, I appreciate those words that you shared and that inspiration as well. You know, we're, here we are in, gosh, end of May, and spring is in full bloom again. Um, and we're springing into the outdoor season. Memorial Day is, I think, next weekend coming up. So uh, another reason I'm thankful you're here, Julie, is because I'm hoping you have a few entertaining ideas that are kind of earthy and I elegant. Did actually, and, Francesca, and what, um, you what your go-to is this time of year. Um, um, especially because that that is always a trouble a troublesome thing for many of us. Like, what is in season? What should we be doing? So, we'd love to hear well, about that. Just look out your window and you'll see what's in season. Right now, walking around. You know, I live in New York City, Julie. What's in season is uh... <laughs> oh, no, at, a few um, brick walls around the trees in front of the nice buildings. They do okay. the landscape, well, and you're going to see tulips bursting all over New yes. York City in the next couple of weeks. It really like spring is bursting. All the Pacifica trees, the flowering branches, gorgeous. And if you're lucky enough to have any of that on your own property, quite honestly, you don't even really have to go to a, a florist. You just take your snippers and go outside and yeah. all kinds of branches and foliage. Um, so what I wanted to do here was sort of focus on the feeling that we have this time of year. So I chose sunflowers, as um, the flower that I would work with when setting up a little um, brunch, you know, having a little company oh, over. Beautiful. Uh, and I love mixing what's in season, both in, in the produce department, as well as in the, the flower aisle there, or the florist. So I chose lemons and fresh herbs. You can pick those up when you're in the supermarket. You can have a little window box or a raised bed. And I have rosemary, lavender, bay mm -hmm. leaves, some eucalyptus. So it's a beautiful visual for your, you know, your eyes, but the scent is incredible. It just makes you feel refreshed and alive. So you can do something like this. And um, this is made, this is a little more of a design and it's made in foam and, you know, it's something more that is a flower arrangement, but you can get the same look the same feeling just by adding little the same accents but in little ways like using if you're going to do a um a tower and you're going to put out to have some people over put out some breakfast food and again just staying with the grazing so people can come and get what they want when they want it you can intersperse some uh, sunflowers in a little clay pot and all you need to do is see if i can take this out just these little 
uh, you know, condiment, plastic takeout containers. Just drop it right into the little clay pot and cut your wow. sunflower really short. And then you can kind of add a little pizzazz. And I did the same thing with Wolfman's jams. It looks so cute. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And then put a little of um, eucalyptus in between. We have these fantastic Wolfman's uh, English muffins on the bottom, which is a meal in itself. I picked these little milk bottles up, $5.99 for six of them. You can't beat that. I'll find many, many uses for it. So you have something like this and you just put it around the table, spread it out. Doesn't have to be one big arrangement and certainly anyone can do this. Mm -hmm. Or you can make like a charcuterie. I'm going to put a little, excuse me folks, a little box up here just to help so you can see it a little bit better when I'm displaying it. So what Julie, I what I love about what you do is that you take everyday items and you elevate them. You you give us you give us hope that anyone can create these things. It looks it looks expensive, but when you just shared the, the cost of those bottles, I mean, yeah. it, it's such a wonderful tip. Julie, I'm really good at cooking, and I'm kind of a messy cook. I love messy dishes, plates, you know. But I'm not great at um, entertaining beautifully like what you're doing. I've always been intimidated, you know, um, like I put a bunch of flowers, but I'm always a little bit in intimidated as to how to present the food beautifully. And it's hard to present the food beautifully. Typically food is brown, messy. And you just like in, in less than a minute, you have this yeah. like, gorgeous display. So what I tell people, just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. I like to give presentations, do workshops that just get people inspired. It's not like, don't, you don't have to write this down. I want to inspire you that when you go home, you're gonna open up your cabinets, you're gonna look in your refrigerator, you're gonna grab a bunch of flowers, cut a few branches and create. How could you not like it when you're done if that's how you spent your time? Yeah. And these are just yeah. helpful tips like you just take a bunch of the um the herbs and just tie them together with a little twine and they just smell so good and you put them around you can slice up lemons different ways and snuggle within there i picked up this plate i am like i could do a whole show on all the bargains i've gotten <laughs> i think i did 50 cents for this plate but i love that it had the yellow rim on it i'm like i would pay more for a paper plate so keep your eyes open for, you know, garage sales and, uh, you know, resale places. And if you want to do something that kind of lends itself to this you know, vibe, here's an easy thing. You have a clear glass vase, candy, yes. some lemons or limes. Okay. So if you just take a couple of lemons. Yeah. Vase, then I have, yeah. I, I even have avocados, but we wouldn't put them in here. These are no, just for no. the avocado toast. <laughs> I'll come over after this and we'll have a little avocado toast. <laughs> or water. So we do lemons water. in a glass cylinder. We have lemons or limes. You could probably use small oranges too. Then we're gonna add water, lime. correct? And if you're watching online too, make sure to join the conversation and give us some of your entertaining tips. Or if you try some of these, let us know afterwards. Curious to find out. So then you can just oh, take- your flowers, just give them a fresh cut. Whenever you're cutting, uh, putting flowers in a vase with water, you want to give them a fresh cut and do it on an angle. So that I allows to ask more. You, Julie, I wanted to ask you about that. How often, so if you have flowers like these sunflowers, how often should I cut the bottom tips off? Right before you put it in the vase with water. And then, uh -huh. um, Every two to three days would be the best. But I wanted to show you this arrangement here. Okay. I bought these Astromaria, picked up a bunch. Oh for, my God, Astromaria is my favorite flower. Four weeks ago, four weeks ago. Wow. Now, when I first had them, I had them in this vase. So okay. as the weeks went on, I would every couple of days I would give them a fresh cut, change the water until they got down to here and they're still lasting long because it's so close to the water they don't have to work hard 
And I'm like, I can't throw these away. <laughs> right? Nor so you. you so every three, four days. And when you cut the bottoms, Julie, do you change the water? Yes. Because it's yes. going to keep your flowers um, alive the longest is clean water in a clean container. What temperature should our you, water be oh, at, Julie? Uh, room temperature. Okay. And, and I was going to ask something, Francesco, Julie. How do you feel about the little envelopes that come when you fly, when you buy flowers? Very important. Very important. Um, the flower food does make a difference. It has a disinfectant, so it mm. keeps the water um, cleaner. And it has oh. a sugar component that uh -huh. gives the flowers energy. Like oh, flowers. wow. I had no idea, Francesco, Julie, what was in those little packages. You know, like nobody really? tells you what's in it and they just tell you to put it in. It's so good huh. to know. So, so what Julie. I'm doing here is I'm making this a very low to the top, which I think is cute because you don't have to do it tall. The old rule of thumb is your flower arrangement should be one and a half times the size of your vase. Oh. But I threw that rule out a long time ago. I think most people did because a lot of times it looks nice when it's mounted on top. It depends on what you're doing with it. Did I do okay, Julie? Yes. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. On that note, I want to thank you both. A big thank you to Patty and Julie and to all of you for joining us at our tables for breakfast today. Please follow along with Wolfermans on social media. Cheers to a good start to your day and a happy spring plus kickoff to the summer season ahead. Mm -hmm.